Okay, so let's just jump right into it. And uh, this is the big, 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 big news. The diversion, some sort of explosion that's happened in uh, Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 pipelines that uh, delivered gas from Russia to Europe. And uh, it just happened on 26th of September, 26th, 27th, somewhere there. And um, yeah, uh, who needs this? Who's going to be sort of benefiting from it? Or like, why would somebody do this? And uh, obviously, one instant sort of um, country that, that has some sort of benefits or at least some sort of motives for this is Russia, obviously. Because Russia was uh, was trying to basically extort Europe to stop the stop the sanctions, so on and so forth, stop sending uh, weapons to Ukraine, stop helping Ukraine, so on and so forth. And uh, Europe or U United States, UK, uh, they have not stopped this. They continue to support Ukraine. And um, Russia already stopped several times um, Nord Stream 1, because Nord Stream 2 was never actually uh, in operation. So they stopped Nord Stream 1 two times in July and, and in August. And basically the whole September, the Nord Stream was not operational. The whole gas, um, the whole like, amount of gas, whatever limited it was, 20% or so, that uh, Europe was getting um, from Russia basically was through the Ukrainian pipeline, through the transit that goes through Ukraine territory. Which is kind of weird that, uh, on one hand, kind of weird that Russia still continues to send gas through Ukraine um and uh, with with these pipelines they most likely is them who who actually destroyed them um and why like this is like you need to understand this kind of a sort of f thinking right on the one hand russia wants to held hostage basically european union especially germany um with with the gas right but at the same time um they also understand that you know at some point sort of the war will be over and uh, they cannot just like totally sort of stop the 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 gas flow because there will be sanctions right there will be sanctions the the their infrastructure might be just expropriated nationalized by other countries so on and so forth and also it will be fines right it will be fines by international sort of courts so on and so forth because of the broken contracts because if you uh, sort of promise to deliver um, on in your contract certain amount of gas at certain prices so on and so forth. Even if you are right now like the, the everything changed because of uh, Putin's decisions on, and all of that, but uh, the contract the contracts the contractual obligations are still there in place. And so if you don't fulfill them, well, uh, once again there will be fines, and th this is why like even when uh, Russia very kremlin very very clearly uh, try to basically use it as a leverage tool um, against europe in july and in august um, they were always sort of doing it weirdly right they didn't just stop it right away they said like oh we, we have like this turbine uh, that needs to be replaced whatever we need some we need to do some maintenance jobs so on and so forth so they didn't just like straight like just take it you know take an l and, and just say like fuck you europe they didn't do that they, they tried to use some sort of um excuses basically to stop the gas flow and now what russia can claim and will claim most likely is, is this is like a force majeure situation right like the the situation that is like beyond uh, whatever the contractual obligations might um um might force them, or like whatever contractual obligations were described. In sort of, um, this is sort of the, you know, the the same kind of area, or of course could at least be in the same sort of area that, um, well, uh, you know, some hurricane happened and destroyed infrastructure. Like, oh, sorry, we can't do anything about it, right? And this is, I am, I am all, all but certain that this is exactly what um, they will try to sort of claim, and they will try to. Um, use an excuse why they can't deliver any more gas and in fact they were saying exactly that like sort of uh, that um, basically like oh like we don't we don't need we, like we don't need this basically like we in fact in fact like we 
we want sort of to deliver gas to Europe? Like, why would we basically, um, why would we basically um, get rid of like our not get rid of like blow up, <laughs> not get rid of blow up our um, infrastructure that we've spent like billions of dollars to um, to actually create in the first place? And also, why would we sort of um, throw away billions of dollars of income? But at the same time, it's sort of um, you need to. We all need to understand that um, Europe was paying to Russia quite a lot of money for both gas and oil, and uh, this war does not cause that much basically to Russia. So I'm pretty sure Russia uh, calculated, decided that uh, well, we will have enough kind of money anyway coming from like oil or maybe from coal that type of stuff and um yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna pressure but we're just gonna apply as much pressure as we can right now at this particular moment to europe onto europe and uh, we will see if they break or not if they um actually decide you know screw it let's let's sort of roll roll the time back and 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 kind of basically cave into this like um demands of putin um at the same time at the same time apparently it did not really work out in a sense that i mean we will see how europe will, re will react kind of in the long term but um like after basically a day after um a day maybe or two after this uh, event happened um european union several people from European Union um, said that well, first of all, this is not acceptable to uh, attack kind of cri critical infrastructural infrastructure in Europe, and uh, we suspect the foul play from Russia, and uh, we kind of you know we're investigating all of this and so on and so forth. But uh, we also need to kind of take a look um, where that this thing happened, and. Um, um, first of all it's kind of pretty big when the leak happens is uh, at least from my understanding first of all it takes time it's not just like a leak and then sudden explosion it's a leak and gradually sort of the pressure um, drops and uh, you have to basically investigate where it happened how so on and so forth but this was not the case at all uh, in fact this was like several two blasts actually with one pipeline and then another one right so even though N Nord Stream 2 was not operational uh, from my understanding there's still some gas um, inside of it I'm not sure like gas gas or some other um, like inert gas whatever it might be to kind of hold the pressure because otherwise the pressure because the, the pipes are laying on the floor uh, on the sea floor is like 100 meters basically or some, somewhere uh, of that um, area uh, of that uh, scale and uh, so it's, there's quite a lot of um, pressure obviously on the pipe so you need to um, counter that pressure from the pressure inside of the tubes inside of the pipes and so there was some pressure inside and um, apparently once again not apparently it is the fact that um, the north north stream 2 was also destroyed so <laughs> once again like the pipes were doing fine uh, for like 50 years or whatever how, however long Nord Stream 1 exists and then suddenly in basically one day both of the pipes both of the main major pipelines were destroyed like seriously like there it's not it's not a coincidence and um that's why it's so bizarre that Russia's um basically 
operate like i want to say covert operation but they're not covert they're like they're they're not covering anything like there's no cover up it's so blatant that yeah it's just so blatant that it's it's insane so basically here's the here's this uh close to the what is the what is the island what is the island name there's this island name bornholm um basically and close to that uh, bornholm island there was this uh, these two explosions right and what's interesting is that that place is really close to baltic pipeline baltic pipe that um Denmark basically Denmark I mean I guess maybe like Norway as well I'm not sure who uh, who actually uh did, yeah Norway probably um created um, and right now just I think like a week ago Norway um and Poland basically um put into put into operation Baltic pipe uh because uh, guess what like Russia is not the only one who has gas and like natural resources so on and so forth so Poland uh, buying, you know, uh, energy from other countries, and this is a crucial. This is a crucial thing to understand, and it's it's just so blatant, right? It's so blatant. The explosions are very, very close to the Baltic pipe, and so this is a direct threat. It is a direct threat to the whole Europe, saying like, do you know what? We don't really give a fuck about your money uh, for gas we can destroy our own infrastructure and maybe we can't like really nuke you maybe we can't nu use nuclear weapons but we can make sabotages and diversions and explosions like this on your infrastructure or you know like close to your infrastructure that it will be that w it will affect how you operate how much maybe time and money and so on so you have to spend to surveil your critical infrastructure you need to spend more resources on it things like that this is so if so like as the second the second you see the explosion the region and where the baltic pipe actually um actually goes through uh, which regions which is so close that it's direct threat saying Today it was our pipes, because fuck you, basically. Tomorrow it can be yours. And I'm pretty sure this is exactly sort of um, the reasoning and, and the logic in Kremlin, in Putin's brain, and in all of his fucking mafia and criminals who are running the, the country of Russia, who are running FSB and all of the fucking... Um, all of their... Um, brutal fucking apparatus you know so yeah this is not particularly like i'm saying not particularly even they're not even trying to hide it to be honest because it's so like it is so blatant it is the, it is exactly basically the same thing and as um in 2014 when green uh how was it how is it was called green polite man or whatever the fuck green man basically um just uh, armed people in green uniform um who came and sort of occupied crimea basically and russia denied for for the longest time that it was not them not them not them and then in 2017 or 16 in, a, in an interview putin was directly saying and laughing that yeah of course it was it was us like what the fuck why are you even asking so like yeah i mean it's so blatant like i'm saying this this attack is directly attack on european infrastructure on european security and it is so so fucking amazing to me that germany still talks about oh we don't want to deliver tanks to ukraine because it might um it might trigger some extra escalation from from putin from kremlin in the war like, dude, they are literally blowing up your infrastructure, or the, or not your infrastructure, but the infrastructure that's been set up to deliver gas to you to Germany, and they're threatening another crucial piece of infrastructure, the Baltic pipe, and you're still talking about the fucking things that oh, 
there could be escalation. This is just like uh, that part of the of this whole situation is absolutely mind blowing and mind boggling to me that people in Europe, some some people in Europe, some leaders in Europe, are like still talk about not like trying to not escalate it. Like Russia is like constantly up in the game, constantly raising the stakes. I think it's I think it's time for for. Uh, a lot of European leaders to actually wake up and and actually deliver real real weapons to Ukraine, because otherwise uh, this can continue for for a long time, and this kind of uh, terror act it, it is a terrorist act. Russia is a terrorist state at this point. They're blowing up critical infrastructure in Ukraine. They're killing civilians, murdering people left and right. They're destroying critical infrastructure, infrastructure, um, critical to Europe infrastructure. There, there are a terrorist state, and they should be recognized in the whole world as a terrorist state in United Nations. Uh, they, they must be stripped of their fucking presence in United Nations. They can't, they cannot like participate in whatever, having like a veto power, so on and so forth. Like it's just, it's just insane at this point. What Russia is doing, how they're threatening the whole world at this point. Or at least big part of it, because in Europe there are a lot of people you living in Europe, and unfortunately there are a lot of countries who are stupid enough to fucking uh, get on that uh, Russian gas needle. So yeah. <laughs>